Hi, this is Doc Severson for the Theo Knight Report for Thursday, December 1st. Well, the stock media has got to have a name for everything, right? So they're calling this the beginning of perhaps the great rotation as we have interest rates on the rise now. And because of that, we have bonds getting absolutely crushed lately. But keep in mind how markets normally top. Markets normally top in a very noisy process like this, in a very, very noisy process before they start to fall. They typically do not just drop from the top like this, although bottoms happen like this. So bottoms happen in a V-bottom fashion, especially lately. But tops usually go on for far longer than people expect before it finally starts to reverse. So we'll see whether or not that happens. But maybe this is the beginning of that rotation that they talk about. But in any case, if we look at the S&P 500, we definitely have some rotation going on right now. With markets essentially at all-time highs, as we look across the sectors here, we have, say, like the builders, uh, pretty close to all-time highs. Energy has gotten a huge jump lately so there's a lot of money coming out of other assets into energy recently and you can see why as beat up as they have been over the last two years and are well below the recent highs so a lot of room for these to run if in fact we start to see uh, energy prices going up again although the biggest benefit of this has been definitely financials financials have been the, the greatest recipient of this if you think it about it, it makes definite sense because of the fact that if rates go up, financial institutions have more margin to work with and the business tends to accelerate because of that. They're going to be a little bit more lenient about making loans if they have a bit more spread to work with. And of course, a guy from Goldman Sachs getting on board as the Treasury Secretary might mean that some of the Dodd-Frank stuff goes away. Who knows? Anything could happen right now, but financials definitely have some room to make up for here and are going about it with absolute relentless price action. I mean, even look at this that we've seen over the last two few days here. Flagpole, consolidation, and breakout again. So this is right back to the same old kind of stair-stepping price action that we expected to see. And so this is the hallmark of a very strong low volatility rally. Okay, so as we know, industrials are also doing well because of the fact that, yeah, we've talked about infrastructure projects, and those are going to be the beneficiary of those. Technology has really been sort of the, uh, the stepchild here that's getting robbed to pay for a lot of these. So technology has been so strong for so long, this is viewed as almost a piggy bank to go hit. So technology and the XLK is that. Same thing here for consumer staples has also been kind of a recipient of that, thinking that, you know, great place to take profits. The dividend play is over for right now, so XLU has been selling in as well too. Still hasn't broken trend yet, but a great place to take profits in XLU. Healthcare, as we know, who knows what's going to happen to healthcare over the next year or two. So a lot of indecision, but this could be another base for the next leg up as this finishes consolidating. And then finally, consumer discretionary, still very, very strong. There's a lot of optimism right now. Some might say a little bit too much optimism, uh, but anything can happen, especially when there's no new administration yet for another month or so. Now, one of the trades that I like to use to take advantage of markets that move like this can be seen here with the trade that we placed on American Airlines. So again, another strong rally, but in this case, what it did was it came straight up to a resistance point, which was a former high here from 2015. So late 2015, former high up here at 47, price has gone sky high straight up to that resistance point again, and has slammed to a halt. So all I'm expecting here is maybe about a week of consolidation at this level, right? And the way that we view that and measure that is through the fractal energy indicator here. And it's showing that it's probably got another few days left of consolidation at this level where we do, would expect to see price go sideways to down or somewhere in between is a very typical consolidation pattern 
similar to what we've seen here and here and all the way across here, right? Sideways to down, somewhere in between. So what can we do to take advantage of that? And if you think about that, as the price consolidates and somewhat slides down, typically we'll have a little bit more bump in implied volatility. So if we play something that's called long vega, which rises in value as the implied volatility starts to move up. So we want something that takes advantage of a range, a little bit of a bearish price movement, a rise in volatility. This is where we could use a short time spread. So here's what a trade like this looks like. And it's essentially selling one call and buying another call a little further out of the money with a little bit more time value to that. So in this case, we sell the 9 December at 44 and a half on American Airlines, and we buy the back week 16 December at 46 and a half. Okay, so this creates a credit. And what's important about this is that it has zero downside risk whatsoever. No downside risk. This thing can go to zero, and we don't have any problem with that. This is going to be, I think, important going forward in the market over the next year is that we're going to have some quick downdrafts. There's going to be things that occur which bring great deal of uncertainty into the market and we're going to have downdrafts. We're going to have volatility spikes coming along from time to time on this news that's not priced into the market. We're dealing with forces that we have not had to deal with before. We've been coming from this very sort of quiet Fed-driven market and I think we're going to get into an animal spirit driven market going forward, which is generally good news, but it's going to carry more volatility. So we have to be aware of this zero downside risk. So we're not hurt by that. OK, so we're also looking at a trade where essentially what we look to gain on the trade is about what we're risking on the trade. So we're unity reward to risk. And so it's a very quick acting trade. And typically, we're going to be looking for about a 50% return on risk from this position. So that's kind of the key of what we do is we're always trying to understand the character of the market, understand what edges that the market is telegraphing us, and make sure that we're playing along with those edges and taking advantage of everything that's out there. That is it for today's report. Thanks for listening, folks. We'll see you this weekend.